Hey there, Max here from MaxHarlan.com. I'm an emotional health coach, and today I wanna share with you four simple techniques to handle toxic relationships and the stress that they cause. Hey, before we dive in, if you haven't already, I wanna give you my free three-day stress management video course. I'll send you one video every day for three days in a row, straight to your inbox, and the videos are short. They're like five to 10 minutes, so you can immediately take action and see a quick win and a quick result. If you're interested in that, you can find it at maxharlan.com forward slash stress less, and I'll link it down in the show notes too, so you don't have to search it. So toxic relationships can be incredibly stressful. There's a lot of narcissists and a lot of sociopaths out there, and even though most people aren't that, many people, and all of us to some degree, borrow plays from those horrible playbooks. And the question is, at what level of manipulation does a relationship become toxic? And also, what do you do about it? And specifically, you know, what do you do about it if it's a relationship that you can't get out of? You know, if it's a really, really, really close friend, or if it's a family member, or if it's a friend of a friend that you can't get away from, or if it's a coworker that you're forced to be around, how do you handle some of these people? You know, pandemic time has forced a lot of people to move into a lot of weird living situations and stick in jobs and be around people they don't wanna be around. So it's important that we have these skills, especially now, but it always was. So first off, I wanna share with you the symptoms that actually like define a toxic relationship. I'm pulling these from an article right here, and they are, number one, is your physical or emotional or mental well-being is consistently harmed by the person. Number two, your needs are not being met. Number three, depression. Anger, exhaustion are your normal emotions after spending time with them. Number four is you feel like you're walking on eggshells. And number five is being worse around one another, being better alone or with other people than you are together. So here are my tips on how do you manage something like this if you can't just cut it off. That's the first tip is if you can, and if it's not a super intense relationship, cut it off. But the second tip is get a group of people that you find emotionally healthy you know get your two or three close friends who you also think have a good head on their shoulders and really are pretty objective about relationships and share with them what it is that's bothering you a lot of the time if you're in a toxic relationship things will feel like they're your fault things will be spun so that everything's your fault and all the blame lies with one person and if you get around somebody like that and you don't share with other friends what's going on, then you can feel like, oh man, I'm just, you know, I'm the asshole here, I'm the jerk here. But if you share these ideas and you share what's bugging you with people that are critical and that are somewhat objective, then there's a good chance you'll realize, oh, I'm being manipulated and I haven't seen the tactic that's being used to make me feel at fault. But the big thing is you've got to connect yourself to a broader reality than just you and the toxic person. The next tip is have bright red lines, have things, have boundaries that you don't allow to be violated. And the way that you enforce a boundary is a very specific way. You don't wanna just scream at the person, you don't wanna call them names, you don't wanna be aggressive, you don't wanna be reactive. Instead, you want to state the facts, state what the person did, state that it bothered you, and give them an alternative. And do it relatively calmly, relatively non-reactively. You know, you say, hey, you know, just because I messed up that piece of art for the marketing department doesn't mean that you should be using the following four letter words to curse me out. Instead, what I'd like you to do is give me constructive criticism, something like that. But give the person non-reactive, constructive, practical advice, as well as stating where your boundary is and why it's unacceptable for them to do a certain thing. This non-aggressive form of standing up for your own boundaries is something that makes it hard for anyone to find fault with you. If you're kind, but clear and assertive, it's hard to you know, get in trouble with a broader community like work or your social group, because it's very reasonable to say, I don't like it when you do this, please do this. That's fair enough. But when you start attacking the other person back, well, now it starts to get a little bit fuzzy 
who the toxic one is in the relationship. And my final tip is one that I found from an amazing article, I'll link it down below, but it's just acceptance of the condition. It doesn't mean that you always wanna be in this toxic relationship. It doesn't mean that you always want things to be how they are. But the idea is to accept the fact that this is what the relationship is, this is who this person is, this is how they're behaving. And then the idea is that that acceptance removes some emotional power. You know, it's, it's, that, it's that old cheesy self-help quote of what you resist persists, which means if you're really resisting the other person and fighting somebody that's toxic, in a weird way, they've burrowed deeper into your own mind and they've taken over control of you. So accepting and being non-reactive means that you actually are in a position to master yourself and not to be, you know, the slave of somebody. Hey, I hope this was super helpful. I hope these really quick three or four techniques help you to manage the toxic relationships that you can't get away from and that you don't want to get away from in a graceful but assertive way. Also, if you haven't already, please go check out my free three-day stress management video course. I really think you'll like it. I send you one video a day, each day for three days, and they're short. They're five to 10 minutes, they're actionable. They will make you immediately feel less stressed, get you a quick win, and start you on this journey. If you're interested in that, you can find it at maxharlan.com forward slash stress less, and I'll link it in the show notes below. If you have any questions about any of the ideas I shared with you today, or anything stress related for that matter, please leave them down below. I'll get to as many comments as I can, and I'll get to 100% of the comments within the first 30 days. In the next video in this series, I'm gonna share a full body stress relieving meditation, which is going to immediately help you to handle those acute stressful moments that you can't handle otherwise. That video will be linked somewhere on this page, probably also down in the show notes. So I'll see you in the next video.